Now in this part of the question, we're given that g of x equals e to the x minus 3, all divided by e to the x minus 2, where x is any real number, but x can't equal the natural log of 2. If it did, you'd end up with the denominator coming to 0, and anything divided by 0 is undefined. And what we've got to do is show that g dash of x, that is to differentiate g of x with respect to x just once, we've got to show that g dash of x equals e of x over e of x minus 2 all squared. Okay, so to differentiate g of x, what we've got is essentially a fraction where we've got two functions of x, both in the top and the bottom of the fraction, the numerator and denominator. So to differentiate this, we're going to need to call upon a particular rule. And that rule is called the quotient rule. And if you're not familiar with this rule, then you'll see that there's a link at the bottom of this video if you're looking at this on my website. Okay. Now, quotient rule. If you've got y equals u over v, where u and v are functions of x, then it can be shown that dy by dx is equal to the bottom of the fraction, v, times the differential of the top of the fraction, du dx, minus the top of the fraction, that's u, times the differential of the bottom of the fraction, dv dx, all divided by the bottom of the fraction squared. So, you need to learn that, or in some cases you most probably will find that formula in your formula book. So, let's use it. We can go straight in and say that therefore g dash of x equals, well, it's the bottom of the fraction times the differential of the top of the fraction. So, we've got the bottom of the fraction, e to the x minus 2, so just put that in brackets. And we need to multiply it by the differential of the top of the fraction. Differential of e to the x is e to the x, differential of minus 3 is 0, so we just got e to the power x. Now we come on to minus, we have the top of the fraction times differential of the bottom of the fraction. Well the top of the fraction, e to the x minus 3, just put that in brackets, and we now need to multiply the differential of the bottom. Differential of e to the x is e to the x, differential of minus 2 is 0, so we've just got times e to the x again, and put that in brackets. It's all divided now by the bottom of the fraction, all squared. Well, the bottom of the fraction is e to the x minus 2, so we're going to have e to the x minus 2, all squared. Right, now we just need to tidy this up. We've got two terms on the top, and I notice that e to the x is a common factor. So I'm not going to expand out these brackets, it just gives me more work. I'm going to pull out e to the x then as a common factor. I'm also going to put a square bracket here. So for the first term, I can see that I'm multiplying e to the x with e to the x minus 2. So that means that in here goes e to the x minus 2. Come on to the second term. We've got e to the x being multiplied by e to the x minus 3. So I need to put minus make sure you have this in brackets, very important, e to the x minus 3, and then square off the brackets. So that's the top factorized, and all this is divided then by e to the x minus 2, all squared. So keep that in there. Now, if we clean up what's inside the square brackets, we've got the e to the x, first of all, on the outside, and we've got essentially a 1 here, 1 times e to the x minus 2. Well, that's going to give me e to the x minus 2. But this is where you've got to be careful because we've got a minus 1 here. Minus 1 times e to the x minus 3 is going to give minus e to the x plus 3. Okay? So that's why it was very important to write that in brackets. It's all over then. e to the x minus 2, all squared. Let's tidy up what we've got in here. 
ETX, take away ETX, that cancels out, gives us 0. And then we've got minus 2 add 3, which is 1. And 1 times e to the x is just going to be e to the x then. e to the x all over e to the x minus 2 all squared. And that's what we had to show. All right.